Hey everyone, welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast and today we are going to talk about how to make money in crypto. Now right now we have got an absolutely crazy market where people are people are losing thousands if not millions of dollars in cryptocurrency as it's going through the floor right now. My co-host Brandon Duff absolutely loves this space. Let's see how he loves it now. Welcome Brandon, how are you pal? I am doing amazing. It is 4 a.m. in the morning and I'm ready to go. And, I, you know, it's waking up where your portfolio was once at uh, one token at $85 and now it's down to 11 cents uh, is quite uh, quite the interesting topic, to say the least, especially in the making money in crypto space, because it just goes to show you that you can uh, get wrecked, even if it's a top five crypto. I mean, we're talking about Terra Luna here, where a crypto that was in the top five with a eight million a billion dollar market cap, and it just plummeted because of faulty tokenomics, dropped down to eleven cents. So, uh, but there's still money to be made. I mean, you we were just talking about previously um, how your cousin, I believe day trades and is able to brother-in-law is able to short uh, crypto just like stocks and make money on the way down Um, unfortunately i uh, do not trade i'm more of a gamer so we make money with games and holding and different DeFi projects so uh, i don't get the benefits um, or i'm just not knowledgeable in that regard so uh, there is still money to be made just like your um, brother-in-law so, like, obviously, you said, like, one token's gone down, like, to faulty tokenomics. Yes. Now, is that a made-up word? <laughs> like, what is faulty tokenomics? Um, uh, so, tokenomics is, like, the economics of a token or how it um, is coded, in a sense. So, what happened was with, uh, it was a algorithmic stablecoin, and with that, they have a, a stable coin is a coin that is pegged essentially to the dollar and it's supposed to keep at a dollar. But uh, with some market manipulation, people unpeg that, which dropped the price of uh, a stable coin under a dollar. And to repeg it, it needs to use the secondary token, Luna, and mint more to keep it on peg. And so it's just, uh, fancy words for the, the code that's involved in the token. And uh, what happened was these big whales pretty much shorted the whole thing, which allowed it to fall off peg, which then created a death spiral and dropped the price of um, of Luna. And in doing so, that as it printed more Luna, and people were getting all scared about it. It started, people started selling or shorting it, which then decoupled it even more. And then it became this death spiral where it went from $85 all the way down to 11 cents. And at what point, like, what was the window on that? It was like $85. And how long did it take to get to 11 cents? Um, About two days um, over the... Probably in the last 24 hours, it dropped 90%. And overnight, it dropped another 6%. But I mean, that was from $6 to 11 cents. So uh, quite a bit, a lot, quite a bit in uh, two days. Damn. Right. Okay. Cause like I'm, I'm looking at my crypto.com app and I'm swiping up on nowhere is like, like follow the trade. And it's just like red, red, red. No matter, it was, it was, I'm just scrolling. So it's not just obviously the, the faulty tokenomics on that red. one coin. Like the whole market, 90% of the market is showing red. Like what's happening? Why? Yeah. So with that, uh, what happened was the, I guess, founder, uh, Duke. Quan, I think as the name is, bought Bitcoin and was using it to stabilize the, the, the crypto, uh, their crypto Luna. And they were doing that because they wanted, to, they had so much extra money and people weren't very excited about that. And they kind of knew he was very bullish and arrogant. And so they took advantage of that. Long story short is to try and depeg the, or trying to repeg the, um, the, 
stable coin, they actually had a bunch of Bitcoin and they had to dump that Bitcoin onto the market, which then further dropped the market. And so having a top 10, top five cryptocurrency just really dropped the whole market into a free fall. And so for instance, some of my major tokens that are in the top 10 are down 60 to 80%. We have um, Terra Luna that's down 99%, Bitcoin that's down, I think, like 30%. So yeah, there is a huge market that, or the, the whole market is down quite a bit. So like, and you know what, like some people that are in this space, like this can set, like set them off, got it? Like this can be like a proper disaster in their lives. Like you, like obviously because I know your background, you look very, very calm. <laughs> like consider like what is happening like you look dead dead chilled out but for others who like probably have invested a bit more than they should have or have been banking on it or have emotionally attached to it like their whole life is being sh- like being be- being messed around isn't it by like yeah by this issue like what's your advice for those people Definitely. So just like you said, you should never invest more than you are willing to lose, even in a stable coin. I know people that have pretty much took their life savings and put it into a stable coin because it was better than they were getting in, uh, say, the bank, where the banks are paying 0.01% of an interest rate. This was paying 20%, which is insane. And so when it went from, you know, people had hundreds of thousands of dollars in there, some people had millions of dollars in there in a, in a stable coin, they pretty much, it dropped 50% and people are losing their shit. And so, uh, you know, just like anything, like you should never invest more than you're willing to lose. Um, for me personally, I'm not very emotional towards money. I have like, I'm not like emotionally invested in it. There's a lot of other things I'm more emotionally invested in um, because if you're emotionally attached to money, then that's kind of an issue. But uh, if you are having a some serious problems, you should definitely seek help. Uh, there is a lot of hotlines out there to talk to someone. So I think that's super important if you are someone who uh, is feeling on the brink of something, I would definitely suggest talking to someone and uh, figure that out. Um, it is not worth your life on just a couple dollars or a couple hundred dollars or whatever that value is. So definitely seek help uh, just as a word of advice. I never, ever, ever thought one of our podcast episodes, we'd have to direct someone to a hotline if, if like, if things are bad. But no, that, that's the reality. That's a scary reality. I wasn't like, like, thankfully, like, obviously, touch wood, even though there's no wood here. Like, I don't know anybody who's, who's in that situation where like they've put everything in there and it's like, this is going to make us rich, babe. This is going to make us rich. And it's like, ding, 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 ding. like, for, so for instance, like for that stable coin, like the whole sex appeal of that stable coin is it's a stable coin. Like right. it, it's a case of like, Oh yeah, it's fine. Cause it's always going to be tied to the dollar. So, but I can get a better like interest rate. I, can, right. I get that. So how does a stable coin that became unstable, recover from this like surely that reputation sort of scenario has just been white it's like well you're yeah. not a stable coin you're a, you're a joke yeah so it's gone up and down and it's trying to be repegged but as they're trying to repeg it it's dropping the price of luna so it's kind of like we talked about earlier a death spiral uh will it recover i don't think so i mean they're trying to have a recovery plan they're trying to get more vc funding there is a lot of money in the world more than people even know so Mm. where people are able to take billions of dollars and short a position on a uh a cryptocurrency that is a eight billion dollar market cap is pretty just amazing to say the least i mean it it does suck Uh, i mean i think i've lost 40 something thousand dollars and so in doing so, um, you know, it's just a, a learning lesson, a learning opportunity that crypto isn't safe and you should be investing in uh, top, even the top, you know, cryptos aren't safe. But I mean, this is a thing that happened similar with another project called Titan, where it was pegged to another uh, had a th- uh, stable coin and that stable coin lost its peg and it also dropped to uh, pennies if not a hundredth of a cent. 
And so it does happen. This isn't the first time, but this is the first time where a major uh, coin with such a large market cap it happened to. And it grew so fast. It, you know, it was an untested project in a sense because it did grow so fast. And it just goes to show you that uh, market manipulation in crypto is huge. But I mean, I'm sure it's been way worse in the stock market or the housing market. So, I mean, it's just, we're seeing it in a bad light in crypto, but I mean, it's been happening for decades in the stock market, uh, just in a different way. I think that's, I think that's really critical to point out because obviously like if people who are seeing this red, 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 are like, oh, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's like, well, no, making money is a risk. Like investing money is a risk. Like it's not a scam. It's just how you mitigate your own risks in order to mm. not see like the, the true up and downs like a heartbeat, but like to see like that gradual growth or like some, and, and you are right, like the stock market gets manipulated. Like the if you're trading against current like currencies, like proper like dollar, pound, Forex, euro, yeah. like forex, like that's that's still she like people obviously trust those dollars and those pounds, but people can lose money in that. People can lose that money in houses, like anything that they do or try to make money in, you've got the potential to lose money. Um, so it is very important that like it's just another opportunity, it's just another way of making cash. Um so how do you like obviously how are you going to advise people to mitigate their risk at this moment in time in such a a red market yeah i mean so with i think in 2017 ethereum dropped like 90 percent 95 percent so and it's uh, still a top two crypto so it's definitely um things that can recover over the long term uh, it took what, five, six years to get to an uh, all-time peak for uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin from the ultimate crash that we had in 2017. I wasn't a part of crypto during then, and I've obviously heard stories, but I did live through the 2008-9 financial crisis with the housing market where people were writing bad uh, loans. And, you know, all, market manipulation is all over the place. Uh, there are just people with a lot of money that can swing markets and make even more money. And it just, it is what it is. Um, as far as how to recover, um, you know, I'm not a financial advice, advisor, so this isn't financial advice. But like, I think we talked about it in the last episode where we, we should have a business that is making us money in our local currency that we can pay our taxes with and all that fun stuff, uh, our bills, you know, everything to the day to day. And then we should have a secondary investment opportunity where it's either crypto, real estate, um, that sort of thing where it's a hedge against inflation. Obviously, real estate is much more stable. It has cash flow, depreciation, tax benefits, but it's still in fiat and it's a much slower um, moving market. I mean, uh, until recently with the, the housing market, um, with uh, supply chains being like obliterated and our, I mean, our house has gone up like a hundred percent in the last two years. So that's, I mean, that's nice, but cryptocurrency, you can, you know, get up to a 10 X in a year or a thousand X in a year. So there obviously with high risk comes high reward. Uh, and there's, you know, a lot of opportunity to lose everything. So I uh, just need to understand the risks and, um, not worried about the day to day and focus more on the long term and the statement of sustainability of a project versus trying to ape into these uh, shit coins or these meme coins. Um, and I think a lot of people should be focus focusing more on uh, the really hard, not hard assets, but the, the, the cryptos that have tested the t tested time, like just Bitcoin, Ethereum, and that sort of thing. Okay, so like in terms of like obviously how to mitigate your risk, it's obviously never invest more than you're prepared to lose, right? Um, which is obviously numero uno. Have use crypto as your secondary source of income rather than your like your investment portfolio rather than your primary. Yeah. Have, have something a little bit more like I want to I want to use the term in the real world, but like obviously crypto is very real, so I don't want to sort of devalue crypto, but like to the point of like have something in like in the real world, like, as you say, a business or like, a, like some form of 
income that side that pays for everything then your cryptos your obviously you again Long i don't want to devalue it. yeah it's like it's your it's your play money isn't it I wouldn't say, I mean, it's just a long-term asset. I mean, it's been the fastest growing asset class uh, in any kind of time. I mean, it's faster than real estate stocks, um, all that stuff. It's the fastest, um, pretty much technology that has been massively adopted, faster than the internet, faster than iPhones. So it's definitely a technology that is here to stay. Uh, I would say that people should really learn the technology. I mean, I was a super critic of it. Uh, for the longest time, because I, just like a lot of people thought it was just a bunch of tokens that were scams that no one could use to actually spend. But it's um, the technology behind it is actually a way to uh, speed up uh, a lot of the automation that, we, and then we talked about it previously, how the NFTs on how a lot of people just don't understand the technology that can help with a lot of things, pro- process a lot of things without having manpower. And so uh, if you focus on the technology and focus on, say, just having Bitcoin because of how that's set up, uh, it's definitely worth investing into, even especially right now, since the, it's so low, it's kind of getting a discount. And in, I believe in 2004, 24 is when the next halving is. And with every halving, that reduces the supply of, uh, not reduces the supply, but reduces the mining of the crypto of uh, Bitcoin, which then creates, creates a kind of a scarcity factor. And then the price typically, most cases goes up um, quite a bit. So there's a, um, a guy by the name of Plan B who has this stock and flow model that covers that. And with every halving, it, the price of Bitcoin has skyrocketed. So, um, you know, hold crypto long term and just, um, you know, invest in invest in something that you think is going to be there for the long term and that you have conviction in, uh, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Those are the top two. I mean, I obviously thinking that if you invest in the top five, uh, you can get wrecked. But I mean, it just goes to show you that stable coins are not always stable and it just might be not worth it to uh invest in them that's crazy that isn't it because like the, the word stable is very good marketing isn't it it's like it's, right. a, sta- it's a stable coin but you, you can't lose like and yet you do it's like it's, that blows my mind so she, you spoke about like holding and you spoke like like invested long term like how else right we've spoke about day trading and we've touched on day trading a little bit and um, like i mean very little but like how else could we especially in this market in like in a like a, a real like downturn like how should people be looking to make a bit more of an instant cash flow from crypto um so a lot of people will day trade, like you were saying, where they can short a crypto, which essentially what happens is when you short something, you make money on the way down and then you sell the asset back and you make money on the kind of the, the trade in a sense where you're hoping that the market goes down to make money, which is kind of sad. But if, I mean, if you're a day trader, that's, uh, that's great because you can make money on the way down and you can make money on the way up. As far as like me, I still do a lot of DeFi, which is decentralized finance, and I'm essentially providing liquidity to a project and I'm getting paid in a, another token. And I'm using that token to buy my long-term holds or more of them. So uh, you're essentially providing liquidity and in doing so where people can trade that back and forth, um, I'm getting kind of rewarded uh, i'm a bit into the crypto gaming space so we have a lot of nfts where players play with those nfts in a, a video game and earn cryptocurrency which is a play it's called play to earn um, there's a lot of different games like that like action fit action infinity is the largest one um, where it's a, a typically a blue um, blue chip project or a blue chip stock in a sense so there are lots of ways to make them. I mean, <laughs> I have a little um, app on my phone and it's called Sweatcoin. Um, and there's another one called Stepin where you can work out and earn crypto and use that as a way to uh, make money. So there are lots of use cases that people are creating. And I think uh, with the market going down and a lot of uh, companies 
uh, getting into crypto. I mean, Facebook had, uh, I think it was called Lira, where they wanted to pay their employees in their cryptocurrency. So, and then obviously Facebook's coming out with Meta, or it's already named Meta, and they are creating their Metaverse. So there is going to be lots of different ways, uh, I think, in the future. Um, if anyone saw a Real Guy, which talked about, um, it was with uh, God, what, Chris Pratt, I think, and, or maybe it was Chris Pratt, I forget the guy's name, but he has the glasses and he puts them on and he sees this whole different world. And uh, I, think, I think it's called Real Guy, the movie. And I think that's where we're going to be going, where a lot of, instead of just... Um, we're going to be in a metaverse with just AR glasses and you can use these different coins that are kind of, if you think about it, it's, it's no different than having store credit, right? Like store credit is in my sense, a cryptocurrency It's not real money because you can't really um, like turn it in for cash because unless it's under a certain dollar value, they'll, they'll take it. Or it's kind of like a stable coin in a sense, because you can use it to spend money, um, at a store, but I can also go to crypto.com. I can swap my crow tokens for a gift card and buy something on Amazon. And I did a video uh, before of how you can use your money for crypto, but um, I definitely see like that we're going to be going into this uh, world where we're going to have these different, I guess, coins that are going to be made for different uh companies. So uh, Amazon's going to have their own coin. Disney's going to have their own coin. And we're already seeing it. I mean, with uh, these big companies creating their own little metaverses and their own coins. And it's, it's going to be interesting. You know what, like, when you talk about like, the whole v- VR glasses and you can walk around and like, I seen a, a video the other day where basically they're looking at create not VR glasses, but like, um, what are they called? Like you put them in your eyes, like they're, Contacts? If, yeah, contact lenses. And it basically like overlays on your eye. And basically, like, for instance, like if you want to, if you're looking at a restaurant, it like highlight the restaurant. It'd be right, okay, this is like three out of five stars. Here's the reviews. And you can swipe and you can move. And it's like, I was like, whoa. I was like, and that's obviously all around uh, the, the metaverse and obviously bring connecting the two, which is right. good. Because I remember watching, I think it was called Player One, where basically yeah. they're just hooked up to glasses. Uh, and like doing like this big competition, but yeah, like the Russian race the the normal day to get in and and then obviously go compete. So at least obviously the contact lenses like it, it connects the two worlds, doesn't it? Because like I think there's a big fear about like um, the metaverse basically making everyone so detached from like everyone will be hooked up on a drip just trying to like play in the metaverse. So I like the idea of the contacts. Is it like it brings the two together, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's AR versus VR. Um, AR is augmented reality, where it's a kind of like a layer on top of uh, the world, real world, where we're getting data uh, sent right to us, kind of like uh, glasses with uh, how Facebook was going to have their, or Google glasses, where it'd be like a heads-up display. Just like you were saying, it would say like the, the ratings of that, um, that restaurant. It would have you know, all these different things. Um, versus kind of like plugged into the matrix where we're uh, in our little bubble and we're on a drip line to get nutrients and we're just uh, hooked into the metaverse. I don't think it's going to be like that. I definitely think it's going to be AR based, but I think, I mean, a lot of people are going to be able to put on those glasses and, or even uh, a headset, like being stuck into the matrix and work jobs. I mean, for instance, I think Chase had metaverse kind of people learning how to take payments through the metaverse um, at their virtual banks and they could cash out whatever money they needed um, in quote unquote the metaverse and so it's pretty interesting because uh, you know if you're working say from home you can work you know anywhere in the world and still make money and if that's in a dollar value or if that's in cryptocurrency, um, there is so many different options. And we'll definitely be seeing that in the next uh, couple of years here, I think. Yeah, the, Shay, like the, the expansion, I think, the opportunities that are going to come with obviously this massive expansion, expansion is going to be huge. But let's go back to right now. Like obviously, as we said, like everything's in red, everything's cr- or 90% of things are crashing. If you were to give any sort of recommendation and not financial advice, where would you put your money right now? 
Um, I would just be holding it in the long term BTC, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, it's just it has a proven track record over the last you know ten years to be the top currencies. I mean, there are like XRP, which has standed the test of time, but with regulation and them going through all these court cases, um, you know, who knows where it could go. AVAX is or Avalanche token, which is I'm a big believer in because of the technology that's behind it. Um, also has dropped quite a bit, but you know, when there's blood in the water, um, then that's a great way to start buying. Uh, when people are like Warren Buffett says, when people are greedy, then you should be uh, mindful in a sense or reserved. But when people are reserved or um, kind of scared, then you should be greedy. And so with a lot of these cryptocurrencies that are I think will stand the test of time are also great buying opportunities. I just wouldn't probably, I mean, it's happened twice so far for me uh, with a stable coin that has lost its peg. So I definitely will not be, uh, you know, investing in a, a coin that is then attached to a, a stable coin because it like, just like anything, it could lose its peg um, through manipulation. And with that manipulation, people have made quite a bit of money uh, almost billions of dollars. And so, um, you know, I would not, I would just buy uh, coins that are just, that hold the test of time. Okay, so there's two things there, isn't it? It's like, so like, as you say, basically at this moment in time, if you're going to invest in crypto, see it as you're getting your crypto as a discount um, effectively. And then the second thing is like, do you feel like in this sort of, in this situation that's happened in the last two, three days, like, you've learned a different lesson and you're going to invest a little bit differently. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, mate. I don't, I don't want to make it all good. I don't want to make no, it not, sad. Not at all. <laughs> um, no, it, it isn't sad because I mean, I'm just like anything. I'm, I'm in it for the long term. Um, I definitely, I've been in real estate and real estate super slow. Um, cryptocurrency. I've only been in it for a year and I've seen some massive gains and I've taken profits along the way. So I'm not as, I've made more than I've invested, um, so I'm not too worried about that. But um, you know, it is what it is, and I'm obviously going to learn from those lessons. I'm going to restructure my, and I've actually re kind of redone my my portfolio in a sense of how I restructure that. And typically, it's more of like 40% of my crypto is going to be in BTC and Ethereum. Uh, about 35%, and probably if I do this right, I'll probably be, I have to do the math, 30% will probably be closer to um, more medium to low risk, your Luna, which obviously didn't work out, but uh, Avalanche token, more of the top 10 cryptos, 15% is going to be closer to um, altcoins like gaming coins, Gala, uh, SLP, AVAX, um, Rune, a lot of these other tokens, and then 5% or so will be gambling where maybe I'll have a meme coin in there. I'll have some, just some gambling um, moonshots uh, where it's a very, very low percentage of your portfolio. And especially with a bull market, you have to think that everything kind of tracks Ethereum and, and mostly Bitcoin because it is the largest market cap. And in doing so as uh, these larger if your larger portfolio is in Bitcoin, that's going to go up a little bit, um, not as high as some of these altcoins have gone up during a bear market. But in the same regard as everyone's getting greedy, you do want to maybe de-risk some of those those uh, riskier assets into uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So uh, that's how I'm going to be fixing my portfolio because I felt I have much more in gaming. Um, and not as much in Bitcoin. And so in doing so, um, I think I'm going to do risk myself quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, cool. So wrapping it up, final, any final sort of like obviously thoughts, any sort of final bits of recommendations, not advice? Yeah, definitely check. I think crypto is for sure here to stay. Definitely the technology because of how many big players are getting in the space. I mean, there's been so much adoption in the crypto space. Definitely do your research in crypto, uh, in the technology, not necessarily uh, certain coins. There are, I mean, you can always just buy Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum and just hold, but definitely do your research. I think that 
crypto has a lot of opportunity on the upside, but obviously it has a lot of opportunity on the downside uh, or a lot of risk on the downside. Mm-hmm. And so um, there are lots of ways to make um, money in crypto, but just if you want to just play it safe, you can just buy Bitcoin and hold it and um, put it in a cold storage wallet and put it in your safe and never look at it again until you're ready to retire. So. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Hope you found it valuable and I will see you on the next one. Peace.